In a perfect world, what would Battlefield 2042 be? Don't you guys remember that epic reveal trailer that hyped you up for the next era of Battlefield? Looking back at it, the trailer is still fantastic. And what was so special about that trailer and what would we actually need to change about 2042 to turn it into a game worthy of its own advertising? Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I want to talk about the Battlefield 2042 game that was advertised to us before launch, how the details of those advertisements mattered a lot more than DICE thought, and whether or not it's possible to make the necessary changes to deliver that game that we saw in the trailers. Now usually, DICE does a pretty good job with their game reveal trailers. Excluding Battlefield 5's reveal trailer, most of them represented the final product pretty accurately. And sure, they showed the coolest aspects of the game, but generally speaking, what was seen in the trailer ended up being a fairly good representation for the feeling of the final product. And while the final product of 2042 at a glance kind of looks like the game trailer, upon further inspection, the game actually diverges pretty massively when looking at the subtle but important details. Now, as communicated by DICE in their last blog post, they are still working to make many changes and quality of life improvements to the game, but I think we can use the trailer comparison to the in-game experience to show how to fix or at least improve their world crafting flaws. Now, one of the most praised games in the whole Battlefield franchise, Battlefield 1, gets so much credit for the authentic feeling and total immersion in what feels like a true war experience. And sure, the game was able to pull from rich history and real world locations, but it shouldn't be overlooked just how much thought went into making Battlefield 1 feel like a cohesive experience from start to finish. And when watching the Battlefield 2042 trailer for the first time, I thought that we could possibly receive a similar level of world crafting that we had seen with the previous games. Obviously, this did not turn out to be the case, but what I think is interesting upon re-watching the trailer is that DICE got a lot of the details right in the trailer. And what was shown actually solves a lot of the problems in the base game's world crafting. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, after spending a significant amount of time in the actual game and then re-watching the trailer for the first time in a while, the first main thing I noticed are the trailer soldiers. And even the term soldier is important here because the players in the trailer look like they belong in an army. Their uniforms match for the most part, their faces are covered with masks, they all have helmets except for brief shots here and there. They look convincing, modern, and like they belong in a cohesive military unit. Even the quote-unquote hero characters, although the uniforms differ a little, still look like they fit into the army. In fact, the hero characters in the trailer look like they could just be slightly more outfitted with cosmetics compared to the basic soldiers, and it's actually not even immediately clear that they were different classes to begin with, except for maybe Sundance. But we now know that that variety of basic soldiers with cool cosmetics shown in the trailer are just the AI models that are used in the base game. So when an actual server fills up playing 2042, there's nobody actually running around that looks like a typical soldier anymore. And DICE technically has all of these assets in game. There seems like no reason why the specialist skins can't integrate more of the AI uniform cosmetics. And even other Battlefield games had special outfits, certainly Battlefield 5 went hard on the hero look, but because it was generally harder to get those hero skins or you had to pay for them or it was an optional upgrade versus the default look, most of the soldiers that you ran into on the battlefield looked like, well, soldiers. If anything, Battlefield 5 proved that you could have both the basic soldier look and a unique look without disrupting the immersion of the game too much. I certainly had a bunch of the hero skins in Battlefield 5, but I generally preferred looking more like a soldier with my own unique mix and match styling choices. And what I'm trying to say, and I think applies to a lot of other players out there, is that when given the choice to look like some crazy standout hero character or a normal soldier, a lot of players, myself included, would opt to go a little bit more on the normal route, with maybe hints of flair here and there. 
But with Battlefield 2042, it starts you off as the hero character and gives you very few options to try and work your way backwards cosmetically to try and look more like a soldier. I think many people would agree that it should be the reverse and perhaps DICE can remedy this going forward. Make the specialists all look a lot more basic from the start, maybe even AI level basic. And then if you start to get inspired and unlock other cosmetic items, then you can start kitting out your soldier a bit more. Maybe even throw your legendary gray beanie on there. In my ideal version of 2042, specialists would not be characters, but instead subclasses with little to no uniform flair beyond what they were designed to do with their special gadgets. The personality and voice lines would be toned down to be more in line with the dark world that they're fighting for, and they would only have access to weapons and gadgets that seem more appropriate for their class, like a traditional Battlefield game. And I don't think I really need to go into more detail regarding class balance, as it's all been communicated extremely well by the community so far, and DICE says that they are working on something regarding this, but there's no details as of yet. Now another thing the trailer has that the base game does not is grit. If you look closely in the trailer, you'll notice trash, debris, and dirt that just doesn't exist in the same maps when you play them in the base game. The trailer sequence showing the map manifest where soldiers are moving through containers. Well, there's bags of trash, boxes, and loose trash everywhere. It looks messy and dystopian. And that same dystopian look is carried throughout the rest of the trailer. But the actual in-game experience, the maps lack most, if not all, of this dystopian styling. The actual in-game map manifest looks amazingly clean without a scrap of trash anywhere. Even Kaleidoscope, the cleanest map in the base game, had massive explosions, fog and smoke plumes that would cover long sight lines in the trailer, and even cones and turned over bicycles and other things littering the streets. Now, of course, it's possible that some of this was cut and toned down to improve performance, or perhaps it was simply added in key areas just for the trailer shots, but I think I speak for just about every single Battlefield player when I say I want 2042 maps to look like they're in a world that's in peril, with dirt, trash, things on fire, and destroyed. And if done cleverly, DICE could even use stuff like smoke plumes or debris to create needed cover for players. Now, the last main thing that was communicated to me through the trailer was how the maps were going to add exciting, fun gameplay moments. That first base jump shown in Breakaway, the oil tanker wall falling down, the rocket launch sequence in Orbital, rooftop battles on Hourglass, the falling sign in Kaleidoscope as a tornado ravages the landscape. It appeared like there's going to be a lot more dynamic moments and extremely cool firefight locations. However, a lot of the fighting in the base game just takes place far away from the exceptional areas of the map and instead has you kicking around basic buildings and open ground for the majority of the fights. The base jump area on Breakaway, for example, is rarely a popular location for fighting, unlike Dama Von Peak in Battlefield 3, where the base jump is a direct sequence and a requirement simply to progress to the next sector. In fact, the rocket launch on Orbital is one of the few cool sequences in the game that I think might actually live up to the trailer. But beyond that, the dynamic map engagements are pretty darn lacking. The toned down destruction, of course, also being more central to the static feeling of the world. The trailer tornado is seen pulling in street signs, trash, vehicles, and soldiers, where in game it's more of an annoyance to be avoided until it passes. And when it's gone, well, there's no evidence that it was even there in the first place. No trench of destruction, missing trees, or demolished buildings. Now, it's been said before, and it's likely that the increased scale accounts for some of the toned down destruction in this game, but even the elements of the maps that can be destroyed dynamically, like say the top of the tower in Kaleidoscope, are so far removed from the main combat that it's rarely witnessed or enjoyed through the progression of a battle naturally. DICE could and honestly should do a lot more to try and craft their combat flow so that what limited destruction and set pieces there are will at least be seen and enjoyed more frequently. Now, what about going forward with the game? It does feel silly talking about future content considering that the base game still needs so much work, but the general narrative of the 2042 world that was communicated through the trailer still has some exciting elements that I'd like to see whenever the base game pulls itself together. The trailer showed a flooded London in disarray, which could be an epic fighting 
location. They could even do more popular cities from around the world shown in dystopian states, which could be like epic DLC or seasonal content. Certainly bringing in classic maps that are remastered with the dystopian aesthetic could be a lot of fun. Imagine, say, Siege of Shanghai with a pre-destroyed central skyscraper and just like apocalyptic like settings around it. There's actually a lot of really fun concepts here that would certainly get me excited once the base game is up to par. The secret satellite that we're all supposedly fighting over if you manage to absorb that story element seems like it's going to be some sort of EMP or maybe even laser type weapon. Using some sort of ion cannon tech as like a squad artillery column could be super cool, especially if it could, you know, like destroy things. Or maybe something like an EMP blast satellite that could knock aircraft out of the sky and shut down ground vehicles for a little while. There's all sorts of fun ideas that could be employed for future content, and for the most part, I actually really like the world that the trailers conveyed, even if the no pat story is kind of dumb. The world itself is pretty cool and exciting. Now, of course, there's an endless list of things DICE can and should do to make Battlefield 2042 a better game. I've talked about them before, the community has talked about them before, and I think DICE has a pretty good grasp on what they need to do with the game moving forward. But I still think that the game that was originally advertised in that first trailer is a pretty good goal to aim for. The world crafting in the trailer is actually pretty decent. The game just really needs to live up to the image that was first shown to me in all other Battlefield and gaming fans around the world. What do you guys think? Does that trailer look more like what you were hoping for with 2042? And do you think that DICE can actually rebuild the game into something that the larger player base is happy with? Let me know in the comments guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.